Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at Nugget 2021 today. I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Andy Markowitz, who is the technical product manager here at Netrio. And today, Andy will be covering uh, an exciting new feature introduction to the Netrio platform, which is Netrio Path Insight. Unfortunately, Andy couldn't join us live today, but we do have our VP of technology, Shin Han, live online to answer your questions. So if you do have any, please feel free to enter those in the chat on the right-hand side of your screen. So with that, all systems are go. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be signed in from. Thank you for joining us. My name is Andy Markowitz, and I'm part of the product management team here at Netrail. For this Nugget session, I'll be giving you a sneak peek into Path Insight, which is one of the newest features we're about to release as part of the Netrail platform. Now, as the name somewhat indicates, this feature will give you insight to the various paths your users and applications take across a given network infrastructure on their way to a final destination. For those of you unfamiliar with Netrio or the product webinars I, I, I give from time to time, uh, let me start with a super quick bio. Um, I've been in the information systems field for nearly 25 years, and for a large portion of that time, I've been with Netrio. Now, when I came to the company, I was a recovering systems administrator, um, and I got the opportunity to be part of our operations team. So it was my job to help customers with implementations of Netrio, as well as to collaborate with them in coming up with solutions to visibility challenges they were faced with. A few years ago, I transitioned to the role of technical product manager for the platform, and it's been a really fantastic experience. Besides the fact that I still get to interface with customers on a fairly regular basis about what they love and and, and what they hate about Netrio, um, I also have the chance to shape our product feature roadmap. So to put that opportunity in a slightly different way, it's now my job to say, hey, let's add that feature to Netrio. It would probably be pretty useful. It's too bad that didn't exist when uh, I started doing this gig all those uh, years ago. Um, but uh, that's enough about me. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? All right, so in terms of an agenda, here's how the rest of this session is going to play out. First, I'm going to cover some background information about this feature. Specifically, I'm, getting, get, I'm going to get into a slightly more detailed description of what uh, Path Insight does, who in an organization it's intended for, and most importantly, why they might want to use it. Um, next, I'm going to get into some definitions. Now, ordinarily, I'm not a huge fan of putting uh, just raw terms up on a PowerPoint slide. I'm making the audience read them. Um, and so I'll try to make my explanations as lively as possible. However, these definitions are going to be important to understand when I transition to the next topic, which is setup and configuration of Path Insight. Now, when I've done product introductions in the past, I've usually gone through the presentation and then clicked into a demo. However, since this isn't technically a released product, I do not have final screenshots of the presentation. Um, therefore, it's just easier for me to do the demo interactively. Um, and you're going to notice a Netro dashboard page in the left-hand side of your screen. I'm going to be clicking into that in just a second here. Um, next, I'm going to walk through actual usage of the feature once the configuration is complete. Um, and then finally, I'm going to wrap up with some frequently asked questions that have come up to me when I presented this material in the past. Um, but I also encourage you to type your uh, questions into the chat window along the side of uh, your user interface there, um, and I'll get those answered uh, as best I can. Okay, so first things first, what exactly is Netrio's Path Insight feature? Path Insight simplifies how an IT organization can ensure optimal performance for all the users on your network by providing visual hop-by-hop -hop reporting of latency and packet loss along critical paths. Path Insight is effectively an improvement on the tried and true traceroute utility found in, the, found in most operating systems today. So like traceroute, Path Insight's gonna track the route packets take using the IP protocol's TTL or time to live field to elicit an ICMP time exceeded response from each gateway along the path to a given destination. Now, Path Insight is going to apply additional functionality to overcome firewall issues, including ICMP echo packages for probes and the well known TCP uh, half open technique to enhance probe effectiveness. Now, since most TCP implementations are going to follow the same path as regular application traffic, Path Insight is going to be less likely to be blocked by firewalls and it's going to enable IT organizations to collect accurate and trustworthy data. Of course, what is only part of the story, right? To make this new feature compelling, we also have to add, you know, who is it for and why they might actually use it. So first up, we have the IT leaders in your organization. Now, Path Insight's gonna, as I was saying a second ago, Path Insight measures the performance characteristics of each network node with full hop by hop visibility into every link. Now, if IT teams are equipped with a single tool that supports those business objectives, right? Increases efficiency and saves money, then IT leaders are gonna gain peace of mind to focus on strategic initiatives that can help them further improve their business, right? 
Now, next we have IT engineers. This is obviously a broad term and I'm using it to classify the technical folks down in the trenches day to day fixing broken stuff and actually doing the architecting of your information system. Now, when I think about this use case, I'm reminded of the popular cliche, a picture is worth a thousand words. By displaying a visual, a visual interactive uh, node by node depiction of network traffic, Path Insight's gonna dramatically decrease, um, reduce your troubleshooting time and it's gonna eliminate the need to scroll through incident logs right, to see performance problems. Um, now, a moment ago, I was talking about, uh, when I was talking about what Path Insight did, I made reference to using Traceroute. So assuming you're a network engineer or you know, a sysadmin and you're trying to run down a problem, imagine having the ability to run 10 simultaneous trace routes from 10 different sources, see all the results in a single UI, and have that data preserved long-term so you can go back and check behavior in the last hour, last day, last month, well, whatever it is. Pretty useful, huh? Now, last on the list is the IT operations people in your organization. Path Insight's going to help them positively impact business success by providing that, uh, by providing that visual tool that's going to simplify modern device connectivity that your user, to services that your users care about, right? So it can quickly identify the exact location of the network where, um, where traffic slowdowns are occurring. What does this mean from an IT operations standpoint? Not personnel are going to be able to give more complete information to the end user who calls as to the cause of a given problem, right? Uh, now, that extra level of information is also going to make it, uh, it's going to make it easier to triage inbound issues that do have to be forwarded to engineering teams. That's going to mean lower MTTR and outages. That's going to contribute to meeting or exceeding SLA levels. You do both of those things, and uh, you're going to have a happy customer. And in a lot of cases, that's, that's all that really matters, right? All right, so let's uh, let's get into some. Uh, with that introduction out of the way, let's get into some definitions for the various constructs in uh, uh, in Path Insight and start clicking through the software a little bit. So first up is monitoring destination. This is simply a final destination node on a network that you want to analyze performance. Typically, this is going to mean a web application uh, or a website like Salesforce or ServiceNow that your users are typically going to access and you want to see how response times look from that particular perspective on that workstation, right? Next, we're going to have monitoring agent. The monitoring agent is the object in Netrio that will actually send out the packets, which will generate the metrics that you'll see in the Netrio UI. And I'll cover more about agents shortly, but in terms of Path Insight, there's going to be a many to one relationship. There's going to be many agents associated with a single destination. Our third definition is packet loss and latency. Now, everybody listening in on this session should know what these metrics are, or for the uninitiated, right? Every agent is going to send out a bunch of network packets to the destination. In a poorly performing network, some of those packets won't make it where they were meant to go. This measurement uh, tracks that loss percentage. Now, for the packets that do make where they were supposed to go, latency is simply the amount of time it took to get there. Both metrics are vital in troubleshooting network health and performance. Um, and then finally, we have the idea of nodes or node types. Now, within Path Insight, um, we're going to be able we're going to classify nodes as one of three types. So we've got managed nodes. This is a node where the device is configured in Netrio as a monitorable entity. Say that ten times fast. Um, and we're going to typically learn other metrics from it as well: CPU utilization, CPU utilization, disk usage, running services, things like that. External. The external node type is a host. Uh, on the path that Nitro can ping, but it isn't monitored in any other fashion. So there isn't any additional information we can present in the Path Insight user interface. Uh, and then finally, the last node type, unreachable. And this is a node type where it isn't even pingable to get information from, but we do know this node was present on the path to the final destination. These nodes are typically gonna come up when access lists and things of that nature um, are encountered from start to finish in a given path analysis. Okay, so let's get into uh, setup and configuration of Path Insights. So first thing we're going to do is add a destination. We're going to add a destination. So shifting over to my natural application window, I'm going to go to administration, modules, Path Insights. So because the window is a little smaller, we're going to come to the hamburger up here. It's going to expand our menus out. Let's come to administration, modules, and then Path Insight. Okay, so we can see right here. This is the summary administrative page for all the configured for all the configured des destinations. Um, for the module, and you can see in this table, we have the name of the destination, the address, which can be IP or FQDN, um, the port will be sending the traffic on, and then additional options as well. 
Okay, now if we wanna create a new destination, we're simply gonna click this button and we'll be directed to a form to fill out the details. So let's do this. Let's go to, uh, we're gonna to go to Denver Broncos and we're gonna go da, 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 dot denverbroncos.com. I'm gonna make a guess, that's the, uh, that's the, URL, that's the actual uh, host address. And we're gonna pick 443 as this, as the port, right? You've got 65,000 ports to choose from, but uh, generally speaking these days, most application traffic is gonna run over TCP 443. Um, now you're gonna notice down here in the bottom of the form is a list of agents. These are the agents that Nitri was aware of. And when we enable one of these, what we're telling the module to do is send a series of packets to our destination from that agent. Now, in order for the agent to show up in this list, we have to have previously added it to Netrio and has to have registered. But to finish this configuration, let's say we wanna go Netrio use two as the agent, we're gonna turn this on. So we're gonna send packets from Netrio use two to www.denverbroncos.com and we're gonna start tracking that path. So let's go ahead and save this. Um, I think that's gonna barf there. So let's go with that and then we're gonna do save. Okay, so we now have that uh, new destination added there. Okay, um, but let's actually get into the addition of an agent as well, because we have to do that in order to make this work. So let's click on our hamburger again. We're gonna come to administration, we're gonna come to system, and we're gonna come down to remote agent. Okay, so to do the, so what you're gonna do here is down, right, we're gonna see this is the list of agents that are registered within this Netra deployment. So to add an agent, you're gonna come into this plus sign, and you're gonna name it. So we're gonna call this test agent 77 as an example. You're gonna have a pick a site. So all agents in Nitro do have to be associated with the site. And the whole purpose of that is just so we can paint a geographic map on where these agents are located. And that helps with visualizations and other parts of the tool. So we'll just go ahead and choose Austin, but we've got a bunch of different sites here to choose from that happen to be configured in the system and then the platform. So we're gonna, we're gonna support, as far as the platform for this agent download, we're gonna support all 64-bit versions of Windows um, and then some of the more popular Linux agents as well. So what you're gonna do is just create that agent and it's gonna add it to the list. It's gonna give us an API key, which turns out you don't actually need this because what's gonna happen is, you as the end user aren't gonna need it. Because what's gonna happen is the agent is gonna be created here. And if I look through this list, I got a bunch of different test agents here. Okay, to get this agent onto, um, onto a remote system that's actually gonna do the work, what you wanna do is actually download it. So we're gonna click this and it's gonna give us a download window. You're gonna have the opportunity to download a zip file, which in the case of a Windows system will unzip into an EXE that you would execute on, this, on the remote system. In the case of a Linux box, it's gonna, ex it's gonna unzip into a shell script, uh, a bash shell script that you're just gonna execute. What's gonna happen from that point is it's basically gonna unfold itself. All of this is gonna be built into that download package. So you're not gonna to have to know the API key. It's just gonna to start to unfold. Uh, it's gonna unfold itself. And, uh, and assuming you had that agent turned on to talk to that destination, it's gonna begin tracking metrics, okay? Now, the last bit of configuration I wanna show here is the manipulation of an agent in your deployment. So let's go ahead to an agent that's probably gonna have something in it. So let's come into Netro use two. Okay, now when I was talking about node types a few minutes ago, I mentioned that a managed node was one of those types. In terms of path insight, um, right? Your agent is actually, a, it's a managed agent, right? Now it's special in the sense that agent data is getting pushed into Netrio rather than getting actively queried. But the point is that a device works exactly the same way as any other device. Therefore we have dashboards, we have services, we have performance pages and so on and so on and so forth, right? Everything that you would expect to see from a regular Netrio device, right? And then on the administrative side, when we click into here, you're gonna have the ability to set up your templates and uh, your contacts and thresholds and, and, and all sorts of stuff, okay? So it's basically, it is exactly like, uh, it's exactly like any other device built into Netrio. Okay, so now that we've talked about the configuration, um, let's, um, let's get into the actual usage. So to get into the Netrio Path Insight UI, we're gonna click on our hamburger again and we're gonna come up here to Quick Views and we're gonna come into Path Insight and that's gonna yield this particular page, okay? So we have a monitoring destination Denver Broncos here, but that one's brand new, it's not gonna have a data. So let's go ahead and pick Dilbert, so Dilbert.com. And what we have here is then our list of agents um, that we can start tracking data for. So I'm gonna pick Netrio Use 2 
And what this is actually going to paint then is, the, is, is that history. So I'm going to zoom out really quick so we can see what the UI as a whole looks like. Let's do this. So you're going to see your histogram along the top, and then you're going to see a network graph down here at the bottom. But let's go ahead and make this bigger for uh, illustrative purposes in here. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is metric representation. So we, we got to the main user, user interface, um, and we've got this, we've got Netra used to sending data into Dilbert. Um, now along the top of the page here, you're going to see your path history in terms of packet loss and latency. So the vertical bars are going to represent the average maximum and minimum latencies for the communication from your chosen agent to that destination at that point in time. So we can see right here um, at 6.15 at night, 18.15 on um, what our average latency, what our, what our average latency max and min latency were as well. Okay, so if we take a look at, I guess I don't have a really good illustration here, like right here, for example, it was slightly higher latency, so it was a little bit slower. Um, so that's the first thing we want to point out is what that looks like. So something else that's interesting, you're going to notice a huge gap here in the graph. Now, this is, uh, this is done on purpose, and it's exactly what it seems like, right? There was no attempt to contact Dilbert.com between roughly... Um, well, I guess in this case, right between seven o'clock at night, give or take, yep, seven o'clock at night to about 6 a.m. this morning, um, right? And in the case of this particular configuration, the gap's expected because this agent, I happen to lose in AWS and we intentionally turn it off every night, right? So we're not incurring hosting costs. Um, now, the other element of this histogram I want to point out um, is the other metric we track, and that's packet loss. So we can see here there was a big spike in packet loss at midnight, right? Um, so what we have here, and then we can move back in our history and we can track all of this. So we're gonna see there was packet loss here um, and so on and so forth, okay. Okay, so what we wanna do now, let's go ahead and look a little bit lower here. Let's scroll down and we can see the actual visualization uh, of, what the, of what the path looks like and the, nodes the, and the nodes the packets took when they went to their destination. So there's basically two kinds of objects, for lack of a better word, you're gonna see in a path insight graph. The first is gonna be an edge. Um, and let me actually make this larger too, okay? So the first is gonna be an edge. Um, and that's just a fancy term in mathematical graph theory for a connection between two vertices or nodes, right? So if we mouse over this, um, you're going to see a few things, right? What kind of nodes were linked, the latency and packet loss metrics for that link, and the likelihood that packets went across that node. Now, remember that since TCP IP is by its very nature meant to be a, meant to distribute packets among many different paths, we can only make an educated guess as to which, uh, which path was traversed from start to finish. So Netra is also going to show a percentage of the initial packets that took this route. Now, over here on the far left side, we have the agent, um, and that's the starting point for the communication to this destination, which is over here on the far right. Okay. Um, so now I mentioned a little bit earlier before um, that the other big thing is you're going to notice here, right? I mentioned, right, the idea of nodes. Okay. So you've got these, uh, these, these rectangles here. Um, with neither names or IPs in them. Um, in this case, do we have any that were that resolved by a name? Um, in this particular path, we do not. But what you will end up seeing is if an IP can actually be resolved according to DNS, it's going to have the name and the IP. Otherwise, we're just going to show the IP. Um, so these are the nodes that actually reported information back to the agent, which then got, which which then in turn pushed that information up to your Netrio deployment. So we've got your timeout nodes here. Right, or your timeout or your unreachable nodes here, which are part of the path, but don't allow uh, reporting of diagnostic information. Right, then you have your external node here, which did respond to the TCP trace route request, but it's a device that Nitro isn't managing. So there's nothing more, uh, more than the IP and network diagnostics that we can know. Now you'll notice here on the far right side of the graph is our final destination. In this particular case, it's a managed node too. Right, we're not gonna be able to poll or monitor Dilbert.com other than to say, hey, yeah, we can get there. Okay, and then finally we have a managed node. So let's scroll back over to the left. Um, you know, so finally we have the managed node here, which as I mentioned before, it's a node that shows up the graph and it's also monitored as a device in Etrio. Because an agent is a special kind of dev managed device, right? Um, just in, in special in the sense that it doesn't query statistics or metrics, those metrics from the agent are pushed back into Netrio. Um, 
but regardless, it's actually a device, right? So if I come in here and I'm gonna drill in, right? Where am I gonna get to? I'm gonna get to the device dashboard for this particular agent, okay? Now, when we drill in here, right? When we have a managed node in Path Insight, we're gonna to get to the device dashboard. And once you get to the dashboard, you're gonna see all the similar behavior that would for any other device in Etrio. Again, the only difference um, in this particular case is that in your performance tab, you're gonna get the specific metrics for Path Insight. So what we can see here is if I scroll through, right? I've got average latency and path metrics, and I'm gonna open this up. Oops, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna get all the metrics that I'm gonna get, but as part of the Path Insights feature on this agent, okay? So, and, and, right, and what's the big thing, what's, what's the big deal of this, right? Because this is playing with the regular plumbing that we have within Netrio, um, you can take all of this stuff, we can drill into these graphs, this is gonna behave like any other histogram within Netrio. So what does that mean? That means we're gonna be able to click and drag. It means that, and zoom in. It means that we're going to be able to use this particular uh, histogram and tie that into, for example, an arbitrary instance report. So we can start combining path metrics with bandwidth usage, with potentially traffic information. And so, and you can get all of that in a single report. And then we talk about, right, your top talkers reports. Um, we can start building canned reports off of these systems. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll come into Omnicenter devices. Whoops. Come on. UI is a little bit slow here, there we go, okay. And let's come into Path Insight Metrics and I can grab percentage, let's do this and run it. Okay, and we got some data down here. Well, what's fun about this is that up here at the top then, we can add these to a custom report, we can email them now immediately. So you have access to all of the same features that you would for you know any other metric that can be found within Netrio. Something else that's interesting to look at if we click our back button a couple of times here, Right. What do we have here? We come into the edit screen, come into instances. Your path insight metrics are going to show up as thresholdable entities, which means you can start getting alerted on things like this. Right? Is the number of hops too high from what it should be? Send out that alert. Is your packet loss percentage too high? Send out that alert. Um, so this really is, a, it, it's basically just another type of data you can get into Netrio to help you get complete visibility into your network. All right, so um, let's come in here. I wanna wrap up this session um, by getting into uh, some frequently asked questions. Um, like I was saying at the onset, some frequently asked questions with regard to, uh, with regard to this data. So um, the first and most common question we get is to know what platforms will be supported when it comes to implementing Path Insight. This module will be released with support for Netro SaaS only. Therefore, if you're a customer running Netrio in an on-premises environment, you will not be able to take advantage of this module for right now. Um, our intent is to only support Netrio SaaS going forward. However, as I'm always careful to mention in presentations, our plans are always subject to change um, based on the needs of our customers and the market in general. Um, something else that's often asked is, how will Path Insight be licensed? Now, licensing details are still fluid. However, it's likely the feature will be licensed the same way as Microsoft 365 Insight is licensed. So any agents that are deployed uh, to support the gathering of path metrics are counted as light devices in the Netro licensing model. And there's gonna be a charge for the core module itself. Now, when we get closer to release date, you'll be able to get more information on licensing from your account manager. And then speaking of release dates, uh, this is also a question that frequently comes up. Right now, we're targeting the middle of Q4 of this year to have a version that's generally available. However, if you're interested in evaluating Path Insight as part of your Netro deployment, we're in the middle of beta testing it now. We would be very interested in hearing feedback from you as far as functionality, features, uh, and usability, things of that nature, right? So we can get that feedback in. Now, in terms of whether we'll support this feature or that feature as part of the module, our plan right now is to follow a phased approach. So our first phase uh, is gonna be general availability and that's gonna be basically everything I've shown here during this session, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, plus some extra pop into the UI for path visualizations. In the second phase, we're looking at enhanced alerting capabilities for the various metrics we're capturing, plus some additional visualizations um, th that are actually gonna take longer to develop than we wanted to wait to get something into the hands of customers um, as far as a general release is concerned. So that's gonna be phase two. And then finally, a third phase is gonna be to more, more closely couple 
the path insight data we are getting with other areas of Netrio. I showed just a second ago, right, with the top talkers reporting, you can create arbitrary instance reports and run top talkers and things like that, right? Um, but there's a ton of data in Netrio and there's really good data in Path Insight, right? So how do we how do we couple those things to give even better insight for users, right? For example, how does the NetFlow data in Netrio that, that Netrio currently captures, how does that relate to Path data? From an analytical and machine learning perspective, can we take Path data and use that with playbook automation to affect network changes. Now, so these changes and these enhancements are obviously going to be the most extensive, right? And they are going to, uh, they're probably going to mean changes to the core at, at the core level of the module. So they're still a ways out. Um, and we don't really have a timeline on that, on that third phase yet. All right, um, so that actually wraps up this particular presentation. That's all the material I had. Again, I encourage you to, uh, if you have additional questions that I didn't cover, um, encourage you to, uh, to get those questions typed into your, your user interface there, and I'll, I'll see if I can get those answered. Um, but thank you again for taking the time out of your day to join us and, and listen to me. Um, we look forward to working with you to implement Path Insight and the rest of the Nitro solution. Enjoy the day, folks.